All right, our next item is the Superintendent 360 survey. I'll introduce this item, and, I, and uh, Vice President Basquette is in charge of our superintendent evaluation process. This is part of that. Um, so I'll just highlight a couple things and turn it over to her. Um, one of them is this is a, a commitment we made to our community was to conduct this survey hire an outside group, which was a change from what we were doing over five years ago, so that this was more objective and, and credible. Um, and we engaged different members of the community to, that had worked with Dr. Swift in some way to um, participate in this survey. So you'll see the different categories, but we're really proud to have five years of data to show. Um, that's unique right now. As our state has changed, the testing that we do and from the SAT, ACT to the SAT, MSTEP from the MEEP, et cetera. So it's nice to have uh, five years of consistent data to show, just like we went through the um, culture and climate survey. The same company um, won our, our bid to do this work, and so it's nice to have a, a sense of objectivity and therefore credibility to this. But I will um, turn this over to Vice President Basquette to help walk us through the survey results and uh, look forward to going through this. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think we had agreed that Dr. Swift will walk us through this. Um, for the viewing public, the, the board has had a bit of a preview on this, so there may not be a lot of discussion, but we did want to make sure that the community was aware that this was done, uh, received, and it will be posted on our website, correct? How soon do you think, Dr. Swift, that it'll be available on the website? I would think um, by the end of the week, I will just check on who's, um, who's in tomorrow, uh, but we should be able to get it right up. All right, thank you so much. So if you wanna go through it. Sure. First of all, uh, thank you, trustees. I appreciate the opportunity to have a 360. Um, I believe that it is important, as we talked about with Ms. Linden's, presentation on, uh, on our culture and climate survey in the district. We're an organization that values the input and feedback from our stakeholders. And I very much want to thank all folks who took their time to respond to the superintendent's 360 survey. And um, this is, as uh, Madam President shared, this is the fifth year in a row of using the same questions and administering the same survey. We use uh, five areas that we established back in 2013. They are communication, community relations, student opportunities and achievement, sustainability, leadership, and innovation. We use uh, a series of uh, uh, leadership groups in the district uh, as a core group of folks who receive the email to respond. And you can see on the slide here a number of those groups so you can tell uh, who we've invited to respond. Um, out of that group, and I believe the uh, total um, number of invitations was 240. Out of that group this year, we received 82 responses. So that is uh, a 34% response rate. We're very grateful uh, for those folks that took their time. On slide four, you'll see that it's a 4321 um, response uh, uh, option. And I recall back in 2013 that we really had discussion around whether it would be a five-point scale or a four-point scale. And the problem with that five-point scale, as psychometricians will tell us, is that sometimes folks just land on the three because it's an easy answer. So I remember our discussion was we would go with a four-point scale. So you can see that four is consistently exceeds, three is consistently meets, and may sometimes exceed. Two is sometimes meets and may sometimes fall short. And one is consistently fall short. So we'll just uh, run through some of the highlights. Uh, you can see the response rates uh, there. And then here's who responded. So uh, you can see 11% from the Blue Ribbon Community Leadership Advisory Group. That's a group of about 40 individuals uh, from the mayor to everyone um, in leadership 
groups um, on council and city council and many other groups in town. Uh, you can see another big area of responses was from our principals. 29%, a third of the responses were from principals. And then, of course, my leadership team. And then I'm also very grateful to our parents and teachers who responded. Uh, in the beginning, the board really wanted to work on this with folks who are regularly in meetings with the superintendent. It was the board's desire at that time not to survey thousands of people, but to really focus in on those parent, teacher, student, and other leaders who are in some level of contact with the superintendent. We did send this year, as we always do, some student invites. I can't recall the exact number, but I can look it up for you all if you'd like. Um, and we did not receive student feedback. So we'll work harder uh, on that among um, other things for next year. Frequency of contact is just a slide that illustrates how often these folks are either in a weekly or daily or bi-weekly or monthly meeting, how often they're engaged with the superintendent. All right, let's jump into the first bucket, which is communication. Uh, this data comes as the data from Ms. Linden Ms. Linden's report this evening comes from K-12 Insight, but we have dropped in a few slides to just make it a little bit easier to read. So when we look at communication, uh, we do have the table there that shows the actual numbers and percentages. So you can see, and by the way, trustees and community, it reads from the right to the left which is kind of hard to read. That's how the company does it. Um, and you can see there in communication how the areas look, and then we'll go directly over to the graph. And you can see that over a five-year period, we're holding on to, uh, to uh, pretty consistent numbers. Um, we'll point out uh, that over time, often these numbers will deteriorate just over time because folks are uh, accustomed to the process and maybe not valuing uh, the work quite as much just due to familiarity. Uh, but there we are on communication. We'll go next into communication part two, which is about expressing ideas, communicating information to the community, timely communication to the community, informing the community, and then clearly explaining the direction and the rationale. You can see how those numbers are holding. And then a third slide on communication that is more around uh, serving as a spokesperson for the community, uh, promoting the district's mission and vision, maintaining relationships with news media, community leaders, and community participants. Um, it's about being out and about in the community. Part two is about attendance, et cetera. And so here are the, the bars on that, uh, the slides on that in slide 16 and 17. You see um, how things are holding with communication. Student opportunities and achievement, there are some areas here that show uh, good opportunity for growth and for additional focus and work, uh, particularly as we look at, um, if you'll go to the next slide, there we go. Particularly, I note uh, the area of supporting high expectations for students and also uh, ensuring equal opportunity and access for all students. We see there, um, obviously, opportunities for improvement. Effective leadership and support for school administrators and staff in implementing district goals and visions for student achievement. So, so there's some good opportunity there to continue the work. And then Student Opportunities Achievement Part 2 has to do with encouraging community support 
four district initiatives. That one remains solidly high there, but seeing uh, the supporting staff to fulfill student achievement goals, uh, certainly seeing an opportunity there for additional work and improvement, and then setting high standards for students. Sustainability, and this is an area that from the very beginning, the board and I had lots of conversation about how to, from a strategic point of view, place the district on a path that would be sustainable, sustainable around vision and improvement processes, sustainable around having a plan and communicating that plan, sustainable about around being willing to make courageous decisions, um, budgeting, and being creative with developing revenue sources. So uh, from the beginning back in 2013, trustees who were uh, serving at that time, you recall we had very deliberate conversation discussions. It was one of the major themes coming out of the 2013 Listen and Learn around ensuring sustainability for the district. So you can see those numbers there um, really are uh, remaining strong. And then with part two of sustainability is really focused on fiscal viability and around our budget. Um, and so we'll see there um, implementing a plan to sustain the district's fiscal viability. Obviously, this has been an area of challenge for all of us over the previous decade. So the numbers are not quite as strong, uh, but they are holding uh, over this period of time. Identifying revenue sources to support our priorities. Um, and then part next on uh, sustainability. I'm sorry, on leadership. This leadership piece at the beginning is about transparent, open, and responsive leadership, setting high standards for staff, um, giving staff members credit for their personal, professional efforts, and so on. And so we'll look at the graphs. And you can see there, um, an opportunity on the far right side of the slide. And I continue to wonder about this question because the way it's worded is providing effective guidance to individuals, which um, I, you know, if I had it to do over again, we might word that question a little bit differently. Um, and I'm not making an excuse for the low score on that page. I just, I just am not sure that that's getting the information that we wanted. Um, slide 32 is the balance of our leadership giving credit for staff effort. Uh, a nice 10 point improvement there this year. Um, and then in the middle slide, uh, credit for expertise and accomplishments. And then the right side, uh, public recognition for contributions. And then our second area on leadership is, is full, um, but really is about collaboration and positivity and cultivating a good working relationship among staff. You can see those two in the middle there, good opportunities uh, for additional work there. And then on the right-hand side is about organizing and motivating. So, last area is about innovation, and this involves creative problem solving, being open to new ideas, working to update district programming in order to meet the needs of students, uh, and cr promoting a culture of creative problem solving, taking educated risk, and a culture of continuous improvement. So you can see that slide on innovation there, and um, the numbers really remaining strong. Uh, that culture of taking educated risks is really fascinating to me. Um, I think as 
resources tighten, there's probably uh, less ability to take very many risks. Um, but I would love to dive into that more deeply in terms of the responses on that one. Our challenges and next steps. We talked about this trustees in our executive session around the evaluation, uh, my evaluation for this year. We noticed that over time, folks become, I don't know what the right word is, but maybe they've been there, they've done this. And so um, we always had said that after the fifth year, we might discuss any adjustments. So I will be open to the trustees. I appreciated our discussion earlier this evening about possible ideas. I have several of those starred to research over the summer. I, I love the, the second idea, which is really blending and aligning uh, this Superintendent 360 with the emerging uh, Ann Arbor Public Schools strategic plan. I think that is a very exciting area. And we had talked earlier in the year about my evaluation and had heard the idea of choosing two or three strategic performance goals each year and measuring uh, those particular items in addition to the wider uh, measures on all of the metrics that we follow. Uh, so with that, trustees, it is my great honor uh, to serve the Ann Arbor Public Schools, and I am very appreciative of all of the folks who took their time to share back um, personally so that we would have this data report to share with our community. It is a piece of information that we will have publicly posted on the website, as we always do. We're transparent and open and honest with these with these endeavors. And so with that, trustees, I'm ready to hear your questions and comments, and thank you. Um, the one thing I just uh, congratulate you on is the very strong performance on this mm -hmm. review. And in general, although many of the numbers are holding steady, they're still improving right now. So that was impressive, I'd have to say. Um, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate you on the results of this mm -hmm. survey and just acknowledge that they're very strong. And there's just a couple areas where you may have gone down by one point, which I'm, I don't know how statistically significant that is. But in any case, these are, these are really good data. I think the areas that showed up with lower scores in general had been kind of consistently that mm -hmm. way. So like the one you mentioned, I'm not sure counseling, you know, uh, growing or counseling individuals and individual teams is the right, I think you're right. We're not quite getting at what we need to get at there. Um, but in any case, I, I appreciate uh, the strong performance here. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your support. Thank you, President Stead. I was going to add as well, um, it's been good to have the five-year trend. Mm -hmm. um, in, in my tenure, we have never gotten to the sixth year with the <laughs> superintendent. So it's good to have the five-year uh, consistent measurement tool. And um, as we've noted, and I didn't take very good notes with all of this, but there are some areas where there is significant improvement from the previous year. Again, looking over the five years, we've a lot has happened in five years in terms of the environment, um, you know, the the political environment, the the economic environment. So that could be affected. But I'm just looking like at one cultivates good working relationships amongst staff. Last year, 67 percent. Um, granted, the first year we did it was 81, and now we're back to 80. So um, again, a lot of positive. Uh, feedback. Trustees, are there other comments or questions? I will just, thank you, I will just remind the community that this is a, one tool that we use in evaluating the superintendent. Um, again, we appreciate the feedback. Uh, again, these are people who have had some type of interaction with Dr. Swift. We didn't want, you know, some information that wasn't as valuable because I didn't know the superintendent. We did talk amongst ourselves of um, maybe changing the pool uh, of folks that we invite to do this next year. Should we do this next year? Um, but again, this will be on the website. As always, we as trustees welcome feedback from the community. Shoot us an email, your thoughts, your questions on our, this tool or something else. But again, this is one of the tools that we use in the overall assessment of, of the superintendent. All right. Thank you. Back to you, President Stead. 
And I want to call special attention to Vice President Basquet, who is in charge of the superintendent's evaluation, and she has been leading um, the new process that we have that's, uh, that we're holding ourselves accountable to and complying with state law. But that's, it's, as many of you have watched us throughout this year, that's not an easy slam dunk process, and she's done a lovely job. So this will be our first year of really shifting to that new model and uh, December will be our um, superintendent final evaluation for the, for the um, calendar year. So just thank you, Trustee Basket, Vice President Basket, and probably we'll cover some of these changes or ideas. Just when we do our retreat, we do that look ahead for the year of major things that are coming up. So just like we have a big list in our folders of all the things we did this year, that will probably be the meeting uh, where we start thinking ahead about just how exactly we're going to get that done and, and what needs to get done to pull that off. So thank you, Trustee.